our votes to count. And that brings us back to an issue that was supposed to be settled years ago. Touch screens or punch cards, fill in the blanks or flip the levers. Eight long years after the Chad disaster, many experts agree that the old machines were the best machines. CNN's Miles O'Brien takes a look. On election day in New York, it will be the end of an era. The big old voting machines, John Adams meet Ruth Goldberg, are on their way out. It's pretty cool. They have 20,000 parts in the machine. Really? Yes, it's not, it's not a lightweight machine. And here at the Board of Elections, they have a heavy heart. Do you know of any case these things ever being tampered with? No, no. Because it's impossible? It's, it's well, impossible that I know of. But ever since this ugly scene eight years ago, politicos have spent billions of your money to throw out the old and bring in the new. Congress even created a new agency to give states suggestions on what to buy. We're hoping that the very design of, of the testing service program is so robust the states will want to opt into the program because it will be the gold standard but eight years later there is no national standard and even if there was states would not have to comply I think it's a huge mess election crusader Susan Greenhall says the problem is computer voting systems in 17 states and DC that leave no paper trail spending a lot of money on equipment without oversight without a rigorous testing process, without a surety that these systems were actually going to perform better than what we had before, was a mistake. How big a mistake? Princeton computer science professor Andrew Appel bought five surplus computerized voting machines, like those used in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Louisiana, and he easily hacked them. He removed a metal cover and found the memory chip. You pry out one of these chips with a screwdriver, and you push in your replacement. That's it. So that's it. He programmed the replacement to cheat in favor of one party by 10% forever without leaving a trace, no paper backup. If you found that there were fraudulent computer chips in them, you wouldn't know what the vote totals should have been. Right. So you'd have to have another vote. That doesn't happen usually. <laughs> <laughs> Appel says there has to be a voter verified backup, as in paper. That's why he is voting for optical scanners, which will be used in New York next year when they say goodbye to their trusty ballot behemoths. I don't know, Miles, if you have shifty eyes, that might not work either. It <laughs> might not. Yeah. <laughs> why is this so hard? You know, we, we sent a man to the moon, and this <laughs> is harder in many respects. You know, everybody says that. Here's the thing. You think about most every transaction you do in life, your name is associated with it, and you have a way of verifying it, whether it's an ATM, a bank statement, a bill, whatever the case may be. In this case, two competing things have to be answered. You want to maintain the secrecy of the ballot, and you want it to be accurate. Keeping secrecy and accuracy together is a difficult thing. They're at odds <laughs> with each other, and that's why we run into all these difficulties. Well, can you, do you have any tips uh, for any of us on how to make sure our vote counts? And I want to know if you voted, too. Well, well, we have no early voting here in New York, and I'm not. I'm going to be in town, so I'll be waiting in line on Tuesday. But uh, here's a couple of things. First of all, um, if you're in a state that has these computerized voting machines, uh, a lot of people tell us straight party line votes are not a great way to go because for some reason the computer can get confused and can register the wrong vote if you have some sort of ballot proposition, yes or no. All right. Second thing, if you're in a state that has computerized stuff with a paper trail, double check it. Make sure what you voted for on the computer matches what's on that paper ballot, that whatever piece of paper you got to verify how you uh, voted. And finally, th this seems like, you know, a duh thing, but don't be afraid to ask for help. We don't do this very often. You know, we do it every couple of years. For that matter, the poll workers don't do it very often. Raise your hand and say, you know, I'm not sure I did this right. And those people there will help you. It's I like mean, asking might be a... for directions. You don't want to do it. Well, that's right. That's right. And, you know, <laughs> when you're in New York, the people behind you in line might be grumbling a little bit. But, you know, <laughs> don't be afraid to ask for help. Miles O'Brien, thank you for your help.